Hello, welcome everyone. I've never done this before, so we'll see how it goes. I am live from Condé Contemporary in Natchez, Mississippi on the third day of Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. I'm exhausted, as you can see. Um, I don't know how to turn this around. Yes, I do. And here we are. Here is our new wonderful building. Delighted to be here. And in this front window, we have a lovely representation of Oshun. Everybody in Miami knows who I'm talking about. It's hard to see her with the glare. There you go. <laughs> and in this window, we have La Caridad del Cobre. And what I'm doing here in Natchez, Mississippi is stopping people on the street and asking them to make a snap judgment on which woman is a representation of good and which one is a representation of evil. <clears throat> and as everybody in Miami pretty much knows, they've become, you know, one and the same person. So joke's on you. Neither woman is evil. And here we go. I wish all my Miami peeps could be here to see this. Hold on, I gotta get this door right. So the exhibition starts here. Moves over here. So this is Andres's piece, Andres Conde. It's Judith beheading Holofernes. And really it's sort of a statement on I would say feminine power. Obviously, Andres is not encouraging anyone to chop off anyone's head, but he did dedicate this piece to Sophia and has a really beautiful inscription on the back. Sophia is our daughter, in case you don't know. Here, we have a beautiful painting by Pablo Santibanez Servat. He's a Chilean artist who's based in Madrid. Uh, the piece is called Snake beyond apt for the garden. And turn this way. And we have a work by Courtney Egan. Sadly, you can't see it very well right here. It's called Dream Catchers. Courtney's out of New Orleans. She's working with, um, oh, I forgot what it's called all of a sudden. And well, they're night blooming series, time lapse. And you come this way. Well, let's take a look at the ceiling. Those lights took three days to install, FYI. And then over here, we have a beautiful sculpture by Cesar Orrico, who is an artist who's based in Madrid. The piece is called David. And it's just another stunning example of, of his work. And we walk this way. And we've got another example of Cesar's. Hello, welcome. This is called Austro. I love how he takes what is truly classical sculpture, right? He's obviously technically brilliant and he makes it very modern with these patinas just really really lovely and the balance of the piece is incredible wish i had a steam iron just saying and then over here oh thanks victoria i'm seeing that right now thanks mama and over here in this little vignette is, are two works by Kevin Sloan. Kevin Sloan is an American artist. He's based in Colorado. Getting a lot of glare, unfortunately, on this piece. It's called My Beloved. And it's this fabulous cake with all these I'm sorry's written in frosting. Isn't that wonderful? 
Kevin's really kind of known for his landscapes. <coughs> Excuse me, he's a, really a brilliant landscape painter. And, and you see a bit of it here in the background. Again, sadly, the camera's picking up too much glare. There's more of it here, a very beautiful dark landscape. This piece is called The Soft Monument, which I just love the name of the painting. Thank you. Look at it. And I love how he went a little thicker on the frosting, you know, a little a little thicker. And look at the brush strokes, they're so bold and beautiful. All right, guys, some of my candles have gone out there. By the way, um, this exhibition was, <laughs> honestly, I could not have done this without a grant from Visit Natchez. So, so, so grateful. Um, and also John Grady Burns. Uh, he has a company here called Nest, and he helped with the installation of all of these plants and the Spanish moss and everything. So we're gonna go back this way now and take a look at this piece by the master, uh, Jose Bedia, one of the most important living Cuban artists, Vegetabilis, it's called. So he takes the female form, fertile as can be, roots her in the earth, and then creates a whole constellation around her body. Look at her. So she's just this cosmic, fertile creature very kind of typical of his work. And now over here, we have a piece by Jeff Faust. He's an artist in um, California, California-based artist. Look at this. Honestly, and this, so this is a painted frame. The piece is called Ascending Quietly. Excuse me. <clears throat> but what kills me on this piece is this just this tiny bit of orange he's made this orb somehow just live again so then we walk over here This is a work by Noah Satterstrom. Noah is an artist who's from Natchez, Mississippi, he lives in Nashville now. And this whole series is based on the disappearance of his great-grandfather -great from the family record. Um, he did some digging uh, and found that his grandfather was in fact committed. He was an eye doctor here in Natchez and uh, things, things started to go awry for him. But the point is, Noah has created this entire series of work as sort of a biography, a chronological biography of his grandfather's life, you know. Um, it's fascinating, to be honest. We're going to have a solo exhibition for him in um, January. And here, this piece is by Darian Rodriguez Mederos. He is the young Cuban artist we've been working with for quite some time now. This piece is called Ambrosia. It's a portrait of Sofia behind bubble wrap. So part of his Obscura series. Okay. Litana, hello, thank you for joining me. I've never done this before, you guys. I'm just so psyched to be able to share this with you. I really wish you were here. Someone's just come in. This is obviously another piece by Noah in the same series. And this is um, about his grandfather being in the old asylum, I believe, up at Jackson. Look at the boats, so fab. Hi, welcome. Thank you. We've been working. We've been working. This is a piece called Mabon, also by Cesar Rico over in Spain. Look at this. Again, this could so easily be a piece of Greco-Roman sculpture, although I would say the detail is 
maybe more pronounced here. But he again makes it so contemporary with these wonderful patinas. This, let's talk about this. Ah, the glare is brutal. Maybe it'll be better over here. So in this, yeah, that's much better. So in this, we're looking at a piece by Pablo Santibanez Servat, a Chilean artist uh, based in Madrid. And this piece is called Diosa Colibri, and that means hummingbird goddess. And you can see by the hummingbirds that are her eyes, where the title came from. <sighs> Look, not only is this piece incredibly well painted, like technically he's amazingly strong, but he has combined elements of Japanese culture. Over here you see this symbol for death, this sort of skull here. And then you have this European looking woman, just unbelievably well painted again with a cactus fruit on her forehead. There are cacao pods everywhere. Some people have suggested that's peyote floating, which would make perfect sense. Um, it's, it's just a fabulous work and honestly has attracted probably the most attention in the show. Salvage. This is called Ama. If people tripping out about the projection. And then over here, you have a piece called Ama, also by Sasan. It is a tribute to Japanese pearl divers, these women that would go down to these incredible depths. And you have her jumping up, you know, gasping for breath with an octopus as a crown. And the aluminum, I love how the aluminum just kind of runs right through the wood. Then we come over here and we have another piece by Courtney Egan stunningly beautiful we've chosen to project it into a pond their magnolias just opening and closing so beautifully the piece is mesmerizing this is the third day and we really could skim this small pond but i mean it's just such a glorious work it's called repository Courtney Egan is an artist based in New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, we really, really love her work and excited to be working with her. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Tere. Hi, Daphne. So great to see everybody here. Even if it's not in person, at least it's virtual. So, all right, I'm gonna give you one last little walk around the gallery and I'm gonna shut up, not say too much about the artist, just sort of let you experience the feel of this by yourself, my awesome AC unit. <laughs> thanks Litana thanks Sarah I appreciate it <laughs> don't shut up you love the commentary are you sure uh, I wish I didn't have this horrible glare let me come to the side and see if I can get her better from this side Miss Chandra there she is <laughs> there's our beautiful representation of Oshun And here we have, of course, well, let's get her over here. La Caridad, beautiful. <laughs> so two representations of the feminine divine.
and that's it love you guys thank you so much oh look at them boobies thank you so much for being a part of this i've not done this before and um there you go i hope it was fun i really wish you were here i really wish you guys were here i wish i could have done this in miami but um natchez is natchez is for me you guys look at this look at this place seriously Emily Taylor, do I have to go back in? I'm gonna go back in now, Emily, because I really want you to see this, my beautiful cousin. There we go. <laughs> thanks, thanks so much, Sarah. All right, I'm going back in, you guys. Hi. Oh, look who it is. Mitchell Lucky. This is the guy This is the guy who put the lights up. 3 days. 3 days of lights, boys and girls. All right. So I'm going to come over here and walk you through the exhibition. I know we've already done this, but I'm going to do it again specifically for Emily Taylor. This is a piece by Andres Conde. Judith beheading Holofernes. He's taken a little trip back into history. Also, he dedicated this piece to Sophia. I'm going to show you really fast. Sorry for the major close-up. Read that. This painting was created for my daughter, Sophia, to remind you of the strength flowing through your veins, daughter of a great ancient warrior with the power to raise the tides at your command, nourishing the people you lose, sorry, <laughs> you love and drowning those that meant you harm. Never forget these words or how truly powerful you are. Love you always, Dad. Kind of brutal, but you know, Daddy loves his baby. So that's what that's all about. And then we're gonna turn this way. Hello, welcome. Thanks for coming. I'm <laughs> glad you did. And so here we have a painting by Pablo Santibanez Servat. He's a Chilean artist um, living in Madrid. This piece is called Snake. Obviously, I had to put a snake in the garden. It makes perfect sense. And over here, oh, thanks, Emily. Look at these two lovely, lovely women who decided to come by. And then I'm just going to walk you guys through the exhibition. I've already done this, but for anybody that's just joining now, I just want to make sure they get to see it. Over here, we have a, a piece by Courtney Egan, who is a New Orleans-based artist called Dream Catchers. And I'm not going to get too deep into the commentary because, honestly, I don't want to bore you to death. If you've already been on this, I'm just going to tell you the artist. This is by Cesar Orrico. The piece is called David. Look at that. Look at that beard. Just giant waves. Look at how he... So rough, but so perfect. I love this piece. And then over here, we have the rest of this garden. Guys, tell me if you want me to zoom in on something. Is there anything you want me to get close to? And anything you want to see closer? Any of these paintings? Let me know. Kevin Sloan, my beloved. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's so lovely. And here we have again, The Soft Monument by Kevin Sloan. I love how thickly he just laid that paint on there. Let's jump back and appreciate this night landscape he did. All right. Thanks, so you're welcome, Nidana. The cake, yeah, the cake. Do you wanna see the cake up close again? This is a piece by Jeff Faust. He's an artist based in California. Again, there's nothing I do not like about this painting. He's painted this frame exquisitely. And then you get in there and it just is alive. Really like it. And it's so hard to see it properly with this, um, with the camera and this lighting, sadly. Again, El Maestro, Jose Bedia, 
one of the most important Cuban artists alive today. Did you like that? Today. <laughs> and let's look at that light. Let's just, let's just look at this. This guy spent seriously three days, you guys, on a scaffold with me telling him where to put every single staple. So I think he deserves some kind of medal of honor for that, or of courage at least. And then over here, Noah Satterstrom, again, native to Natchez. He lives up in Nashville now. Look at this, how just exquisite. And when you get up on it, you see It's not terribly detailed at all, which is perfect for these paintings because they're really just memories or, or imagined memories even. But when you pull out on it, like any good painting, it just sort of comes together. I love it. Hello, Sue. Thank you for joining us. <clears throat> Again. Sofia Conde, a painting by Darian Rodriguez Medeiros. This beautiful painting is part of his Obscura series. And again, the closer you get to it, the more sort of abstract it becomes. See all the different washes he put on this. And then when you pull out, it just really starts to come into focus. And now, I'm gonna come this way. And here we have this beautiful sculpture of Ama, a tribute to Japanese pearl divers by Cesar Orrigo again. And here you have this gorgeous aluminum just melted down into the wood. Look at her hair. So she's up gasping for air from the water. Lori, how you doing, girl? I wish you were here. And this is the piece, <laughs> the showstopper. This piece is by um, Pablo Santibanez Servat called uh, La Diosa Colibri. Again, pulling together European references, uh, South American references, and, and even Japanese in this depiction of death over here. Just a stunning work. And guys, seriously, those are some very well-painted boobies. Sorry to say. Look, look at how he treats the flesh, really, is what I'm trying to say. Look at the fingertips. Just spectacular. Thank you, Michelle. There's another piece by Noah Satterstrom. And then let's really take a good look at this. Lori, you need to see this. This can be projected on a wall. It, amen, she is Latana. Uh, Latana. She never died. Anyway, I really wanted you to see this piece, Lori. Again, this can be projected on a wall. It can be projected um, really anywhere. You can show it on a monitor. But because we really wanted to add a water element to the exhibition, to our beautiful garden here, we decided to project it into this pond. Look at this. Again, our water's a little funky after three days of plants and things. So forgive me, that is not part of the exhibition, the little stuff. But look how gorgeous this is. It's just mesmerizing. People come in and just look at it again and again and again and they stare at it for the longest time because it really is so, just so relaxing. Again, this is something that Courtney worked on or started to imagine, let's say, when she was dealing with the impending death of her mother. Um, she obviously wanted to be able to control time and um, had no control of time, obviously. So this sort of time-lapse work allowed her to at least have the feeling of control. 
And so for everybody who hasn't already seen it, we're gonna walk through again. He's the guy that hung all those lights. All right, guys. So I'm going to take a quick step outside. I'll do one more walkthrough for anyone who has not um, been with us this whole time. And then I, I got to go. I got to talk to some people up in here. Okay. So we're going to start right here with La Caridad del Cobre. There she is with the, the Holy Child. No, do not turn his head. She creeps me out when she turns his head in circles. <laughs> and here's the beautiful Oshun. There you go. I think pretty much everybody in Miami knows uh, what we're looking at here. The duality of this kind of divine feminine. Um, it's been wonderful because I've been using it as sort of an experiment and asking people who come up, you know, um, take a look at each of these women and decide which one is a representation of good and decide which one is a representation of evil. And um, look at Chandra, look fabulous. Wish I could get her better. Anyhow, so telling them to hold it in their head. Don't tell me, it's not my business, what you think. And, um, and then read the text. And then I wrote a short text that just um, basically says that what you're looking at are just two sides of a coin. You're really looking at two versions of the exact same thing, the same person. So really your, your preference is cultural. It really just depends on where you stand. Um, at the end of the day, joke's on you. Neither one of them is evil. <laughs> Look at them. And also, obviously, aspects of our own feminine nature. All right, so let's get in here. Whoop, whoop, Sophie Conde. Sahar, love you, Sahar. So good to see you. All right, so here we have a painting by uh, my beloved, Mr. Andres Conde, with a gorgeous dedication to his daughter, Sofia Conde. Um, about strength, basically. Clearly, Andres is not advocating the decapitated, uh, decapitation of our enemies, um, but he is showing um, Judith uh, beheading Holofernes. There you go, Mimi. Don't be afraid of anybody. So here we go. This is the view. Thank you, Sahar. This is a spectacular piece by Pablo Santibanez Servat. It is showing, well, it's called Snake. It's showing a depiction, obviously, of a snake. And he's using this sort of, no, this is interesting. You feel like you're inside a living organism. So, I don't know, perfect for this exhibition as far as I'm concerned. And technically brilliant, as per usual with Pablo. So now we have this little bit of the garden. We come this way and we see these, this work called Dream Catchers by Courtney Egan. It's just time lapse with night blooming series, opening and closing. It's mesmerizing, I love it. And now, hi Luis, how are you? Hi Giovanna. This is a work again by Cesar Orrico. He is a Spaniard living in Madrid. This is a little bit rougher than most of his work. Bolder, I would say. But it's just, I mean, it's just so wonderful. This was actually going to a museum. He shipped it to me when I was still in Miami, but um, because of COVID and everything else, the award ceremony didn't happen. And I'm just holding this piece for him. So luck, lucky me, excuse me guys, so sorry. Sorry about that. Over here, we have another work by Cesar, and you see what I'm saying. The detail is extraordinary, especially at the scale. And the balance of the piece. 
It's just spectacular. And now we're gonna move this way. Guys, if I'm missing anything or if you wanna see anything up close, please let me know. This piece is called My Beloved. It's by Kevin Sloan. And it is an apology. Melissa Taylor, if you are not here soon, I am just gonna be, I don't even know, I don't even know. That's my cousin, everybody. Let's publicly shame her because she is 30 minutes away from me and she has not been here yet. I love you, girl. And here we go. Look at this. Look at how loose these strokes are. I mean, and I love the volume of paint he's putting on here. I mean, just really makes you want to eat this painting. The man is absolutely brilliant in terms of landscape painting. Well, in terms of everything, if you ask me, he's a really lovely man as well. Um, but here you get to see some of his nighttime landscape in a very soft, soft way, because obviously the focus is on the cake in the foreground. Hi, Natalia. All right. So now we're coming this way. I'm sorry, guys. I keep moving you all around. This piece is by Jose Beria. Jose Bedia is one of the most uh, important living Cuban artists, as you know. And we have here this piece called Vegetabilis. So he's captured again the divine feminine as he is apt to do. Um, she is fertile, fertile like the earth. And then he's created all around here this constellation. So he's made her sort of cosmic, sort of cosmic, a celestial being. Over here, over here we have a piece by Jeff Faust. Jeff Faust is an artist out of California. Sorry. Jeff Faust is an artist out of California. This work is called, um, I just got aggravated you guys. This one is called Quiet Ascension. And again, when you come down here and you see this little tiny bit of orange, it just, I don't know, it makes it, it, makes it appear alive to me. This piece is called Quiet Ascension. Do you see it? Oh, sorry. I lied, you guys. It's ascending quietly. <laughs> Close, but no cigar. Look at this. Talk about ascending quietly. Hi, Barbara. Then over here, we have a piece by Noah Satterstrom. He's a native to Natchez. Hello, Richard. Thanks for joining us. And what we're seeing here is really a historical biography in chronological order of his great grandfather who just went missing from the family record. He was a prominent uh, optometrist here in Natchez and um, come to find out after much research and digging through some of the archives up in Jackson, Mississippi, that the reason he'd been removed from the family history is that he was committed. Um, after a series of strange happenings, let's say. Um, and so you get these, Noah's creating these very surreal, dreamlike works um, that are very historically accurate. And he even, he even orients you with the titles beautifully by giving the date and the, the name. And it's just brilliant, the location of where some of this stuff took place. By the way, we're doing a solo show for Noah in, um, in January. And here we have the young Mr. Maderos. So, dear, hey, Clara, I love you. Good to see you. Here we have a, um, a portrait uh, in his Obscura style from the Obscura series. Oh, thanks, Barbara. It was a lot of work. I'm, I'm glad you enjoy it. Um, and what you're seeing here is actually a portrait of Sophia. 
What's really cool about this Obscura series is that conceptually it's brilliant in terms of using the bubble wrap to protect the subject and give them a level of um, privacy, let's say, from the eyes of the viewer. But then, uh, we miss you too, mama. And then at the same time, he's also protecting the subject by physically protecting them, right? From a technical point of view, this style allows him so much more freedom. So as a hyper-realist, you know, we've got very tiny brush strokes, very detailed, detail-oriented work that doesn't necessarily allow for a lot of, you know, freedom. Sorry for the glare over here. I'll try to hit it from another angle too. Anyhow, when you get close up on these paintings, you can see that he's having a good time. I mean, he is really allowing himself to be much looser in applying the paint. And in fact, what you've got going on are tiny little abstract paintings, which when you back up off of them, create a photorealistic portraiture. It, it really is kind of brilliant what he's done here. Not that I'm biased or anything. Yeah, it just gets worse, the glare, if we go this way. So let's back it up a little more. And now we have another work by Noah. This is Mabon by Cezanne. I, I love this sculpture. Hey, Lori, Lori, which piece? The size of which piece? Look at that. Stunning. I love his expression too. Guess? <laughs> I don't know. It can't be this one. I can't imagine this is the one. Oh, yeah. 48 by 60. Silly me. It's 48 by 60. This is Pablo Santibanez Servat painting Diosa Colibri, pulling from Japanese, European, indigenous traditions. Hi, Harvey. How's Mexico? Now we come over here. And you guys, I apologize for the quality of this water. Honestly, the plants have wrecked havoc in three, three days. We've had a ton of people through here. So this is a work by Courtney Egan. It is absolutely stunning. Uh, it just features these magnolias, so, so typically Southern, you know, just opening and closing in this very hypnotic kind of rhythm. Uh, this is a piece that can be projected onto anything, really, um, or can be shown in, in your home or wherever in a monitor. We chose to put it right into a pool. Look, we're doing almost the same thing. So, uh huh? It's it's strong work. This one, I believe, is. 15 or 17, I have to look it up. All right. Anyway, we wanted a water element in this exhibition. And so we created a pond and decided to project this into a pond. I think this would be really a gorgeous way to display this work in anybody's um, collection. So, all right, my little darlings, I have to go now. Thank you so much for being with me for all this. I've never done this before. So I really hope that you enjoyed it and that it was at least relatively informative and intelligent. I can't make any promises. I'm operating on very little sleep. Um, and that's it. I miss you guys, all of you so much. I wish you were here and um, come, come and visit. This place where I am living is just truly spectacular and the support we've had from the community and the grant from Visit Natchez to help put this piece together this exhibition um, was so helpful I, I honestly could not have done it without them 
Thank you, Litana. I can't wait for you to see it soon. Guys, look at Natchez, Mississippi. I'm sad you're not hearing the church bells and stuff. Every hour they go off. And there she is, Joan Wilder. Wonderful, I'm so happy to know that. I shall see you here. All right, everybody. Love you, bye, thanks. I don't know how to, f oh, finish, that's how. Bye.